So let's look at the rich information that was shared with you by Yordas and now move you towards that creation of your own personal learning outcomes. And of course, there's a number of tools that we could use uh, to help you create those. What do you think some of those tools might be? And I'm going to humbly suggest and give you some inquiry questions that you could use to move you towards uh, creating your own learning outcomes. So when we go into this, what are the essential things that students need to know? What is it that you feel is really important? Another question for you, what are the essential things that the student must be able to do? So when you have your course, what do you think when they come out is really important that they have to be able to do? Can I stop you here? Please. You know why? It doesn't show well. Hmm. It doesn't pop at all. Okay. Let's get rid of have it. Have a look. Maybe oh. is it just that the light is not... Didn't we turn on the light on the board? Is that the reason? That could be actually, right? I don't know. Yes! Shuck. <laughs> there it is. Shuck. You got it. That's way better. Yeah. Now they pop. Continue there, because what we'll do is um, put them together. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, man. <laughs> you didn't tell us. He looked in once, but he didn't say yeah. anything. <laughs> That's okay. way better. It's way better. Now it just sort of pops. Yeah. Okay, good. So they also see the difference. Okay. And I will put something in. Yeah, you need to turn on the light or something, <laughs> or something right? Yeah. I'll show that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, good catch. Another possible question is when we're, when we're talking about learning outcomes, what knowledge or skills must the student bring to the course that uh, can be built on? So as we go forward, what are the components that are really essential there? And then, of course, the knowledge or skills as they come into a course, what is going to be brand new to them which is going to be an add-on to what they've learned before to now what is going to be new. And then another area that is really important is how are you going to be able to take all of the knowledge that the student has previous and all of the knowledge that the student has in the course and how are you going to be able to get that to connect? How is that piece going to come together in this particular course? Maybe you don't actually need to say that anymore. You could just say, okay, you've asked yourself these questions and you mm -hmm. have a set of answers now. Can you really do much with those? Most likely not because they will not tell you what levels of learning will happen for your students, right? If you want to share that information with students or your department, Consider using a model that helps you outline um, the activities, the actions, right, that students will do in your course. Act, boy, that's a to different connection learning. too yeah. altogether. It's a, it has a much deeper meaning than just writing an outcome, mm -hmm. right? It's mm -hmm. actually an action, not just an action verb, mm -hmm. because you would want your students to be able to, okay. Yeah, but you could also say, okay, so you've asked yourself these questions and now you have the answers, what students know and so, but really, does it tell you or your students much about the level of learning mm -hmm. it happens at? Most likely not. Consider using a tool that will help you articulate that, right? So that we know what the level of the learning is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And in terms of research also, um, really for learning to become that solid, yeah, how to say, for learning to, what I really want to say is, 
for a student to only live in that realm in a course will never allow them to do things in the higher thinking domains because mm -hmm. really you want to balance your course to speak to all of those thinking orders right throughout mm -hmm. the course of course if um, if there's little for the student to build on what you probably most likely want to do is start out here in the lower domain to help them slowly build right mm -hmm. but as um, as they are building move them into the higher domain as as mm -hmm. we as we have new learning moving into higher levels yeah maybe speak of the balance that is necessary in a course too mm -hmm. because i mean depending on your context if it really is um, a beginner introductory course to something um, you will probably stay in this realm for the first part of your course but as soon as there is something to build on really make it a point to help your students become those independent learners who can take the initiative use and apply and eventually evaluate mm -hmm. what they've learned right because that's how you connect the knowledge yeah otherwise you can't right if you just stay in this domain mm -mm. not gonna yeah. happen okay so i think it's really it's a recommendation for them to consider what consolidates learning what enables learning mm -hmm. and what consolidates it and what really helps students to make connections mm -hmm. is really delving into all all of those domains mm -hmm. purposefully though right? purpose with purpose yeah into each of those levels with purpose mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like how that that flows much nicer I think it highlights another another point. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it flows nicer. No, you can make uh, things flow. But well, I think it. I think it. Why would you want to use this tool, right? Mm -hmm. Just because it's there? No, not really, right? Mm -hmm. It's more of a tool to help people who now have answers to this mm -hmm. to start planning and maybe balancing things out too, mm -hmm. and seeing that it's a progression. It starts out at a point. And it progresses because we all want our students to end here in university. Yeah. We want them to yeah. be able to we do this. We want everything here. Yeah. Yes. And that's something you could yeah. make that point too, right? So if I want them to be here. But we can't just arrive here. We have yeah. to. It has to be a journey. Yes. That has to be a journey as well. Mm -hmm. And it's based upon uh, having clear understandings to, your, to the questions that were asked mm -hmm. right down to building on what they know already and then infusing that new learnings as you go to the higher levels. Yeah. Let me take you full circle now. I introduced the session by showing you the steps in the process um, and I applied DFING's model, the integrated model, and I want to show you um, how this integrated model helps you have an evaluative tool for yourselves to see whether the design of your course is actually good design. So we are starting out in the initial stage. We have our learning goals formulated. Let's assume um, you, you want your students to be on top of the content of your course and one of, an, one of the other goals is for them to be able to think critically. So let's assume now your course is not integrated. You have these two goals, but what you actually do as a teaching activity is to merely lecture, which would mean that really you bring that uh, broken element in here by um, having two goals, but only speaking to one of them by supplying the content. So your students will get to the content, but how will they get to become those critical learners, really? Um, that's something to keep in mind. So you start from your goals. They help you build your teaching and your learning activities. This is not to say that lecture is a bad thing. Not at all. If you want a lecture, then the goal will most likely be to deliver the content, but not automatically. So to become an active, an active learner, I don't want to say active learner, but someone who can think 
critically also needs the practice to get to that point. So you would have to create learning activities like discussions, for instance, where students can practice those steps. So the same scenario, you have two goals, um, but now you're sitting and you want to write your assessment. Um, how would, would you want to do that? You've delivered the content. What is then most likely the best assessment? It could be maybe multiple choice questions if those are merely content related. But if you wanted to then also include a question that prompts on that critical thinking skill for your students, remember that there was the gap for the students to not practice it, suddenly to be able to show it mm -hmm. in your assessment, how can that be possible, right? So to start out from the learning goals shows you the interconnectedness of all of the elements that you will need to plan for your course. And this is maybe something we should go into detail more, but we won't have the time this week. This week, we'll really focus on yes. you and on you articulating your goals. And the next two activities in our Moodle course will help you do that. So please go and have a look at the readings that are connected to the activities. We'll meet you there. We are looking forward to very rich discussions. And thank you for going through the journey of the light board with Yordison and myself. Mm -hmm.